Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today we have last lecture on the topic analysis and design of negative members. We have already covered two lecture on this topic. So today is our last lecture. So these are the some AAC uh, specifications equations regarding the design of lecture members. We have already discussed in some previous lectures. Uh, these are uh, this is basically the summary of design tables which we can use for our lecture design purposes. So here it is stated the AISC manual contain number of tables to facilitate the design of lecture members. So here uh, the design binding strength of wide plan uh, sections and channel sections with respect to the unbraced lens which is basically the LB we have already discussed about it uh, is given in AIC the table 3-10 and 3-10-11 respectively. So uh, if you want to design uh, the flexural members uh, considering wide flange and channel sections only and you have a unbraced length LB values so based on this LB value and for wide flange and channel section you can use table 3-10 and 3-11 from AIC manual for your design. Now I will show you these tables. I am going to show you table 3-10 and 3-11 here you can check this. So this is basically the table 3-10 wide flange section and table 3-11 for channel section. So these are basically the design charts. I have already discussed, uh, briefly discussed these charts in, some uh, in our previous lecture. So these are the charts you can use, uh, you can use for your design uh, you can uh, you can use for your design problems uh, regarding the flexural members so here this table is only for cb is equal to one so if the cb value is different then you will have to check other tables and you will calculate uh, by considering some ratios cb's ratio with uh, required movement and you can evaluate your uh, required section from these charts so it is uh, something uh, complex as compared to the direct design tables. I, I'm going to show you in some next slides after reading uh, the summary. So here, so table 3-10 and 3-11 have discussed. Now ASU table 3-2 through 3-5. Three, uh, three These tables can be used to select the most economical beam based on the section properties. So there are some other tables uh, provided by ASC specific uh, ASC manual. And these tables I have already provided you. You, you have these tables. So table 3-2, 3-5 can be used uh, to select the most economical. Most economical means cost effective, less weight and give the better results. So you can use these tables to evaluate your section. So now I'm going to show you these tables. Uh, here you can check. So this is table 3-2 from ISC manual. And uh, these are uh, these tables are only for uh, yield strength up to 50 ksi. For different strength, these tables are also available in AC in AC manual. So in this table, uh, you can check uh, selection by zx. So these are the tables you can use to evaluate your required section based on required plastic section modulus. So in problem first of all you will have to calculate your required plastic section modulus and you can check either which section is suitable according to your required section modulus and you will select the section for example so here for example you can see uh, number of sections white flange sections are available in next column the plastic section modulus values are available for respective sections so these values are in decreasing order. How? You can see for W36 into 529 section, the plastic section modulus is 2330 inch cube or cubic inch. And similarly for W40 into 372, the plastic section of modulus will be 1680 cubic inch. Okay. So this is in decreasing order. Similarly, in next column, you can uh, check it is uh, the, it, it is basically the column for design strength MPX divided by psi B. This is the column from here you can evaluate the design strength of your section uh, considering ASB approach. So for LRFB, you can use an, uh, next column. Uh, it is stated uh, 5B MPX. 
according to LRFD, the design strength of this section W36 into 800 will be uh, 13700 kip width. So uh, you can uh, check the design strength from these tables directly uh, instead of using the large equations provided by SS specification in chapter number F. Uh, we have discussed in previous lectures for analysis problems. Uh, so similarly, in other uh, columns you can check L, B, L, R. These are the, these are the basically the limiting lengths we have already discussed in, uh, while uh, we were doing some analysis problem. And you have calculated these L, B, and L, R by using the large equations. So here uh, from these tables you can directly evaluate these L, B, and L, R values. Here next in next column you can uh, check the I, X for moment of pressure about X axis. Further in next column. Uh, you can check the shear design strength of the section by using uh, uh, instead of using the shear design equations from AS specification chapter G, you can directly evaluate your shear design strength directly from these tables. How uh, you can use this table? Now I'm going to discuss about it in detail. So first of all, you will uh, when you are when you will going uh, when when you will start problem. First of all, you will calculate the required plastic section modulus. Then you will open this table and check your plastic section modulus, required plastic section modulus and match that plastic section modulus with this table. For example, uh, you have calculated uh, the required plastic section modulus is 2700 cubic inch. Then you can use this section W40 into 593. Why? Because this section provide 2760 your your required value is 2700 and you can use 2790 this is above above from 2700 so the minimum requirement or required plastic section modulus is 2700 and you have choose 2760 section so it it will it will be good according to a required plastic section modulus and further Based on your plastic section modulus, you have, uh, uh, for example, based on your plastic section modulus, you have considered this section. So this section will provide you the design bending strength will be 1,400 kip fit according to LRFD. So these are the design strength you can evaluate directly from these tables instead of using the large equations which we have already discussed while we were doing some analysis problem from AIC specification chapter F equation F1, F2 and something on. So these are the equation, these are the values of design strength directly available in these tables. Okay. Similarly, for shear design strength, if you have choose this section W14 to 593, uh, you can, you, uh, you uh, so this section will give the shear capacity up to 20310 kips. Okay. So instead of using uh, the large equations in in our last lecture uh, we have solved uh, one example uh, related to shear design strength of your section and we have used uh, the AIC specification chapter G for the for VN of shear strength equations and these uh, these were the large equations to design and depends on uh, various conditions regarding the CV factor and phi factor and equation so from these tables, you can directly evaluate this shear design strength. No need uh, to use the ASA specifications, but you will have to use these tables only for your design. While you are performing the analysis problem from paper point of view or for academic purpose, you will have to use that specifications, formulas, length equations, okay? So when you are, uh, so when you will uh, do the design problem, so you can, directly use this table. So similarly, this is another table uh, based on the IEX moment of inertia. So if you will, if, if you want to use this table, so you will have to uh, calculate first of all the required moment of inertia instead of calculating the required plastic section modulus. So you can based, uh, you can uh, evaluate your section based on the required uh, moment of inertia about x axis similarly in this way. So in third statement, there is a table 3, 6, 7, 8, 10 provide the values of maximum uniform loads. And the ASC table 3-2 can also be used to determine the design bending strength for a beam 
if unbraced length unbraced length means lb is in between lb and lr so here uh, here see uh, uh, tables have provided uh, one equation you can directly use this equation to determine your design strength if when the unbraced length is within this range the design bending strength is so it is stated that when your lb is within the lp and lr lp and lr basically the limiting uh, length value we have already uh, you have already calculated in previous uh, lecture for different problems uh, by using the ss specification chapter number f so if your lb is in between the lb and lr you can directly use this equation to evaluate your design strength and this equation is based on table 3-2 so you either you can uh, directly evaluate your design strength by using this table or either you can uh, you can use uh, this equation and uh, if your lb and lp uh, if your lb is in between the lp and lr uh, how you will check your lb is in between the lp and lr you can use this table to check uh, either your lb is in between this uh, for example for this section w36 into 652 the lp will be 14.5 and lr will be 77.8 so if your lb is uh, for example 20 feet so that will be in between this limiting length value so if the criteria successful then you can use this equation so the uh, i recommend you uh, don't go for this equation uh, direct use this table to evaluate your design strength so we are if, if you are if, if you want to use this equation then bf is a constant from from ac table 3-6 and a simpler version of equation f2-2 this is the equation we have already used in our some uh, problems in previous lectures and from chapter number of ac specifications so these are the basically the tables you can use design strength i have uh, discussed these tables with you in detail and further these tables have already been discussed and this is uh, the revision of this table third time uh, in our previous lecture in all in, in our all previous lectures i have told you about this table this is basically a cb factor for the moment magnification regarding the literal torsion buckley and these are the basically the value uh, used for deflection constants and these are some uh, shear design specifications provided by ASC, 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 AISC uh, in section G1 and G2. We have already discussed in our uh, last lecture, previous lecture, and we have solved uh, one example regarding the shear design by using uh, these equations, especially th by using this equation. And I have uh, discussed uh, with you in detail about these conditions and criteria that how you can use this equation. So this is uh, just for revision. And these are some other equations regarding the shear design. And these are the screenshots from AS specifications for the shear design. We have already discussed uh, these criteria for shear design in detail in our last lecture. You can uh, uh, refresh that lecture. Uh, and these are the some serviceability deflection limit states. It is also discussed. It has already uh, in previous lecture. I have uh, discussed in detail how this table deflection limits for bending can be used while you will perform the design problems. So open your last lecture and see how these tables can be used. However, for a real purpose, I, will, I, I am going to brief you again. Basically, first of all, you will calculate uh, the required or actual deflection of the beam under uh, the applying load. So, after calculating your deflection, you will check your deflection by considering these limitations. For example, for floor members, the live load controlling deflection will be L by 360, and the dead live load deflection will be L by 240. And I have also I have already told you uh, these deflections must be calculated by considering service load conditions, not factory load. 
okay so i have discussed in too much detail in our last lecture again these are the some tables now solve uh, one example regarding the flexural design i have took this uh, example from mccormick book so here it is uh, the question or demand is select a beam section by using both lrfd and ast we will only use lrfd for the span and loading shown in figure assuming full lateral support is provided for the compression fan by floor slab remember i have told you in, in our last lectures or in some previous lectures full lateral support mean lb is equal to 0 it means complete slab is provided on the flange of the section and there is no need to provide some uh, lateral bracing at different intervals so there is no lb full lateral stability full lateral support so lb is equal to 0 and fy is equal to 50 ksi it means if lb is equal to 0 now uh, remember that we have considered the equation f2 2 uh, if lb is equal to 0 Which 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 was uh, uh, pi b m n is equal to f y into z x. So here for this problem you can you, you can directly use f y into z x equation uh, to check your section. So estimate the beam weights for using the LRFD approach. Here uh, the applying loads are just superimposed load, not the self weight of the beam. Uh, always remember when you will go for design you must have to calculate or just approximate uh, the self weight of the beam so here they have uh, the author have used uh, one very simple approach about how you can accommodate uh, the self weight of the beam first of all he have calculated uh, he has calculated uh, the affected load 1.2d dead load is basically the 1.5 And live load is based basically the 30 k. So 1.2 d 1.2 into 5 1.5, and for live load 1.6 into 30. Okay, so this is dead load. This is live load. Factor dead load, factor live load. Then he is going. Uh, he is going to calculate the bending moment. Why? They. He is uh, directly calculate. He is he is directly going to calculate uh, the required bending strength, and he will check, and he will match. this required bending strength with table 3-2 uh, here for example if your bending uh, if your bending moment required bending moment occurs uh, 4000 so you can either select the w14 into 730 section why because this section sorry if your uh, for example if your bending um, bending uh, bending moment occurs uh, 62500 then you can use either w14 to 730 section and w14 to 372 section why because both these sections provide 6230 and 6300 uh, however uh, this is not much critical and not much economical section 6230 because your required bending uh, strength is 6 Thousand and two, sixty two thousand and five hundred. Sorry, six thousand and two fifty. And here, this section is providing six thousand and two thirty. So you cannot use this section. However, you can use six thousand and three hundred. This section. So for your required bending strength, if sixty two six thousand and two fifty, you can use W fourteen to three seventy six six thousand and three hundred section. Okay. So. the author is going to use this approach directly they, they are, he is not going to calculate the plastic section modulus and other criteria he is directly going to find out the uh, required bending moment uh, based on that uh, apply uh, applied load and uh, directly he will uh, check the required bending moment with these criteria and he will check uh, the design strength the design bending strength and will, and will uh, evaluate the uh, required section okay so here the formula uh, he has used uh, 1.8 into 30 square divided by 8 basically the bending moment formula you have already uh, studied in your structural analysis and general mechanics courses uh, for the beam having full udl on its span uh, 
then the maximum bending moment formula is basically the WL square by 8. So here he have used uh, he has used a formula uh, W L square by 8. W is 1.8 from here. 30 is basically the full span and divide by 8. the formula plus 48 into 30 by 4 is basically the WL by 4. So you have already studied the formula when there is a point load in, uh, at the center of the beam or simply supported beam, the maximum bending moment formula will be WL by 4. So there are two types of load occurring on the beam, one is UDL and one is point load. That's why they have used two formulas and combined them. So first formula is WL square by 8 for UDL. You can check the UDL is 1.5 and factored UDL is basically 1.8. That's why they have only considered 1.8 in this equation and 48 in this equation and combine and they have combined uh, them to get the required moment capacity. So by using that equations, the required bending strength is 562.5 keep fit and directly they have uh, from ASC tables 3 2 and the LRFD moment uh, they have evaluated uh, the required bending strength 562.5 so which section will be suitable uh, you, uh, here you can open your table 3-2 I am going to show you the required bending strength, strength is 562.5 so these are some sections having the design bending strength is 13,700 very large so scroll down 560. So these tables are basically in decreasing order. I have already told you. 560 uh, here. Uh, your required moment strength is basically 562.5. You have to uh, select the section by considering this moment capacity. So 562. LRFD in LRFD in, LR, in LRFD this section if if you will choose this section W21 into 62 you will get the bending capacity 540 which is, it is basically less than the 562 so we cannot use this section and uh, 562.5 yeah you can use W16 into 77 section because this section provide 563 bending moment capacity so however you can also use w24 into 62 section because this section provides more capacity 574 kip so here uh, one thing is important some sections are bolded and uh, some are unbolded so basically the bold sections are basically the economical section most economical section when uh, it is demanded that select the most economical section you must have to uh, consider these bolded sections Okay, so according to if uh, according to the uh, most economical section, uh, you can pick this section W24 into 6, uh, 62. Uh, this section provides uh, 574 feet keep bending capacity, and this is most economical. However, uh, if it is not requirement uh, to evaluate the most economical section, you can also use W16 into 77 section. And this section provides 563 fit key. Both sections uh, com compute your uh, required bending strength. Okay. So here in question, they have choose W24 is into 62. So W24 into 62 mean uh, this section. So uh, they have used the more, most economical section. Okay. So they can use this section, but however, they have uh, used this section W24 into 62. Uh, it provides 574 moment keep, uh, fit keep capacity and this is most economical okay. so they have choose this section uh, in our first lecture we have uh, discussed about these uh, sections in detail so basically the first one is basically the depth uh, is basically the depth of the section and the second is basically the uh, weight Per unit length of the section so we have select this section basically we have designed the section according to the loading criteria without considering the self weight of the beam so 
So self made is very important. I have told you in, in the start of this problem. So uh, in this approach, they have uh, select the section without considering the self made. Now he is going to add the self made of the beam and recalculate the design strength. So assumes beam self made basically 62 pound per feet. They have assumed uh, why? Because the, uh, the the section which we have uh, chosen is providing the 62 pound per feet uh, self made. So that's why they have assumed the beam self made is 62 pound per feet. And uh, now he is going to add this assumed self made in the dead load, and he will calculate again the design required design strength by using this formula and again he will check whether this section fulfills the re this requirement or not okay so assume self fit is 62 pound per fit w is not included in being self fit so here again he is going to calculate uh, the section and it is Sorry, this is uh, ASD. Uh, I am just uh, got confused about this. So, assume self fit is 62 pound per fit, and here they have calculated again 1.2 D. Now you can check 1.5 plus 0 0.062, 0 0.062 in Kim per fit. Okay, they have added this self weight in the applied dead load and applied the factor 1.2 D. And here 1.6 L and again they have calculated uh, the required movement strength similarly in this way and they have got 570.8 okay so again you have to uh, you have to open your uh, table 3 dash 2 and evaluate the section in the similar way that we have already uh, seen in the design tables uh, according to 570 from table 3 dash 2 w24 is 62 this section is feasible why because this section provides 574 keep fit moment capacity and your required moment capacity is 570 so this section is feasible so if you got the answer for example 575.8 keep fit so you will have to enhance your section by considering the large section from table 3 dash 2 and we'll check the design strength so your required bending strength by by adding uh, the self weight of the beam is 570.8 keep fit and the evaluated section provides the design strength 574 keep fit from ASA table and this is greater than the required strength so this is okay so you have select that section for flexure only so here the flexural design have been completed okay so this is the very simple problem how you can select the beam basically this is basically the design for beam how you can uh, simply evaluate the beam according to the given loads so note this example considered only flexural and bending design no provision for shear and serviceability deflection have been used so they have uh, he, he has uh, he have not checked the beam for shear and either for uh, deflection criteria so these criteria are very important in our next problem, we will consider this provision for shear and serviceability. Okay. So, before going to our last problem, uh, in which the deflection and shear will be calculated, uh, first of all, uh, you will just have to know about the deflection formulas for simply supported beams. We have already studied this formula in structural analysis problem for simply supported beam having point load at the center. The maximum deflection will be. PLQ over 48 EI and the for the beam having complete luteal on its span and the maximum uh, the maximum deflection will be 5W4 over 384 EI. So you can use this formula to check your required deflection and you will compare uh, these deflection with the serviceability limit states L by 248 L by 360 and satisfy your design. So this is our last problem, very simple. Select a standard hot rolled shape of A992. From this A992, you can check either uh, what, what, what is the value of FY and FU. Uh, and still, for the beam shown in the figure 5.24, the beam has continuous later support and must support a uniform service load of 4.5 kip per feet. There is no dead load. 
okay only live node so but you must have to add the sulfate of the beam you cannot add the sulfate at the start because you don't know about the section what will what will be the desired section so when you will first of all you will check the section based on the given nodes after checking the section you will add that you will add uh, the sulfate of that section and again you will calculate the required movement capacity and you will check from table 3-2 for required section similarly uh, in our last problem we have used this approach first of all they have calculated the required strength based on the given loads while after selection of the section initial selection uh, initial section uh, they have uh, used the assumed sulfate of the beam 62 from this section and again they have solved the problem so you can use this approach uh, to evaluate the design for flexure however the beam has continu uh, continuous lateral support beam lb is equal to zero the top flange of the beam of the beams have been uh, either restrained by slab or any other way the maximum permissible line load deflection is l by 240 so here they have stated that uh, you will have to check the serviceability limit states only for l by 240 not l by 360 okay so here this is the beam having span 30 bit live load 4.5 k per fit so a solution ignore the self-weight initial and then check its effect after a selection is made okay so same approach we have already discussed so first of all factored load w is equal to 1.2 d 1.6 l there is no dead load applied dead load and self-weight is not uh, the sulfate cannot be calculated in the start so here that dead load is basically zero so 1.6 live load live load is 4.5 kip per fit so total factory load is 7.2 kip per fit now the required bending moment similar formula as from previous example wl square by 8 okay so why uh, he is uh, he, uh, they have not used the wl by 4 because there is no point load present uh, at the center of the beam so here only the UDL. That's why they have only used WL square by 8. And from that equation, uh, the resulting moment, required moment is basically 8, 10, 50 K. So here you can directly go to the table 3-2 and check the section according to this moment capacity as we have already uh, done in our previous lecture. Further, uh, that uh, if you go stepwise, you know, first of all, you will have to calculate the required plastic section modulus and then check the section. Both procedures and both our approaches are uh, same or okay. There is no need to uh, think about that uh, whether the plastic section modulus is necessary or not. So, if you go stepwise, uh, you can calculate the required plastic section modulus. So, here in this example, they have not select the section directly based on this required movement strength they have first of all they have calculated the required plastic section modulus and then uh, they have used the table 3-2 so so assume that a shape will be compact of uh, compact shape the full lateral stability so in the design you must have to consider there is full lateral stability okay so it is also stated in the example there is continuous lateral, continuous lateral support that's why lb is equal to zero so when lb is equal to zero the design equation will be lb is equal to f y into z so we have already discussed in our second lecture while we were doing the analysis problem okay so mp is equal to f y into z x equation will be fulfilled when the lb is equal to zero or lb is less than limiting length so here lb is basically is equal to zero why because continuous lateral support is available for the beam so by modifying this equation basically the formula is phi mn so this is mp is equal to f y to zx and uh, for your design you must have to multiply the phi factor so the complete equation will be phi into f y into zx so phi into f y into zx should be greater than the required moment so this is our basic design equation Good design strength of the section should be greater than the required moment what is required moment this is basically the required moment 8 10 k so by using this equation and uh, simplifying this equation zx here and phi into fy will be divided by mu so from this way you can evaluate uh, 
the plastic section molars. So this is 216 cubic inch is basically the required plastic section molars. Now from here you can open these tables and check your required plastic section modulus and you will match your required plastic section modulus with these values and for example if your required section modulus is 199 you will use this because this section provides 200 and from this point of view your uh, selected section will be w24 into 76 and this section will provide the bending strength and shear strength according to the structure so here it is also stated the ZX table list horizontal shape normally used as beam in order of decreasing plastic section modulus. Furthermore, they are grounded as their shape at the top eight ground. So I have discussed these things uh, in verb uh, verbally in, in our lectures. So first of all, based on this required plastic section modulus, so I am going to use the table uh, required plastic section modulus is 216. So it is 224 and is 216. Okay, you cannot use W24 into 76 section because this section provides 200. So you required is 216, 216. So this section can't be used. No, no, this section. So W21 into 93 section can be used. Why? Because this section provides the plastic section modulus is 221, which is greater than 216. So if you want to go for most economical section, you will you can use W24 into 84. This will provide to 244 uh, plastic section modulus. Okay. So for most economical section, you can use this section. If most economical section is not required, you can use W21 into 93. Both sections will fulfill your criteria. So here they have tried uh, W24 into 84 section. Uh, let me check now. Uh, okay. He has used, uh, he have used, uh, okay, he has used the W24 into 84 section. It is basically most economical section. That's why uh, the author chose this section, W24 into 84. Now the author will add the sulfate of the beam in previous equation. What will be the sulfate, which is basically 84 pound per fit. From here, you can check the assumed sulfate 84 pound per bit you can add you will uh, the author will add this uh, dead load as a sulfate in this equation here in the place of zero he will use that 84 pound per fit and will multiply with 1.2d and 1.6l again he will evaluate the requirement strength and check that section will fulfill the requirement strength criteria or not so here again the, uh, the author used the same equation w 1.2 d 1.6 l 1.2 and now here you can see that they have used uh, the uh, sulfate of the beam 84 and uh, 1.6 l same and again they have used wlm uh, wl square by 8 bending moment required equation and required bending moment here is 821.4 and from the from this same equation, they have again evaluated the required plastic section modulus and 219. So the required plastic section modulus is now 219 cubic inch, and you have selected this section, and this section provides plastic section modulus is 224. Now again, after adding the sulfate of the beam, the requirement is 219 and you have already selected the large section which we uh, which which is uh, providing the plastic section mod modulus value is 224 so this section is okay so here the flexural design has been completed now for shear design uh, you have already studied some formulas in structural analysis if uh, there is a full udl load on the simply spotted beam then the maximum shear force will be uh, wl by 2 so that's why they have used the formula vu vu is basically the required shear vu is equal to wu into l by 2 wu is basically the factor load and l by 2 so this is basically the required shear now you will check either uh, whether the section which we have choose uh, will give the shear strength greater than this or not if this section doesn't give or this section gives the shear design strength less than this value 
then you will must have to change your section you will either use the larger section which will fulfill the criteria of bending and shear okay it is not feasible that your section has been passed in flexural design and it is not going to pass in shear design it will be in fail in filling fail condition so here from again this table you have choose this section w24 into 84 this section having uh, the plastic section mark 224 and the bending strength is 840 and uh, the design shear strength is 340 kims so now you will check your required shear strength is 110 and the section provides 340 so from the index table 340 which is greater than 110 so this section is passed in shear so this section has been satisfied for flexure and for shear now the last thing which is remaining is basically the deflection criteria your section must be fulfilled within these three criteria flexure shear and deflection if your section is going to fail within any of criteria for example your section has been passed in flexure and for shear and is going to fail in deflection criteria then you must have to select another section which uh, either using the larger section or provide some other provision so you must have to ensure your section has passed with these three criteria serviceability deflection shear and flexion so your section has been uh, clear or passed uh, in flexion and shear now we will going to check uh, sorry we are going to check uh, for deflection finally check the deflection the limiting deflection criteria will be l by 240 why because in question they have stated the maximum controlling deflection will be l by 240 either it is stated l by 350 or l by 240 it is uh, it, it, it will mostly given in the uh, problem statement uh, that you have to require to check the deflection criteria with the limiting deflection l by 240 or 350 so here it is required to check your deflection with limiting value of l by 240 so first of all you will calculate your required deflection and you will check your uh, and, and you will match your required uh, deflection with this limiting criteria okay so limiting criteria states that your limiting deflection will be 1.5 inches l by 240 l is basically 30 and 13 to 12 mean you are converted your uh, fit length into in, in, into inches okay l by 240 the limiting deflection will be 1.5 inches mean your beam uh, your beam cannot tolerate the deflection more than this so when you will calculate your deflection it must be less than 1.5 inches if your calculated deflection is going to superpass this limiting value then your beam is considered to be, uh, considered to be fail in deflection criteria and you will have to choose another section okay so from deflection point of view they have used here the equation delta r is equal to 5 wl4 over 384 uh, again from this table you can check for beam having the uh, udl uh, simply spotted beam having the full udl the maximum deflection will be 5 wl 4 over divided by 384 ea 5wl power 4 divided by 384 ea so author have used this equation to uh, calculate the required deflection and he will check this uh, deflection with the limiting deflection criteria so here wl4 over 384 ea they have applied this equation and he will get the result 1.19 inches deflection so in this beam the occurring deflection the occurring deflection is basically 1.19 inches and it is less than the limiting deflection so your beam is okay in deflection criteria so here your design has been completed you have checked the section for flexure for shear and for deflection and your section has been passed in, def uh, in flexural design in shear design and also in serviceability or deflection criteria if one of the criteria is not going to fulfill you must have to increase the section size or by uh, use some other provisions for later stability later torsion buffing and etc so it is very important or it is essential that you must have to select the section uh, which will uh, provide the sufficient strength in serviceability limit states shear and bending so this is the design procedure 
in this way you can uh, select, uh, design the steel beams um, by performing the shear reflection and bending strain criteria in last in our last problem which we have solved we have solved the problem only for flexure we have not used the shear provision and deflection provision okay so this is the complete problem in this problem we have uh, select this uh, check the section for design of uh, lecture and design for shear and for deflection so here our uh, Flexural member analysis and design topic has been completed. Uh, I will give you, I will provide you some uh, homework problem. You can solve uh, that problems for your practice purposes. And uh, from next week, we will start our last topic from the course point of view, uh, which will be uh, design of connections. In that uh, portion you we will cover bolted connection and welded connection so it is the end see attached file for homework uh, i will email uh, the homework problem uh, to the cr uh, by considering these all problem which we have solved in lectures and in addition uh, this homework problems it will be enough for your paper point of view so try to solve these problems and uh, we will arrange another uh, zoom class uh, within some days or in another week uh, or in next week uh, if you got any problem if you get uh, if you have any if you find any if you found any problem uh, you can contact me or we will solve our problems in zoom class okay thank you very much allah Hafiz.